you from Zoomlandia, my favorite land, and I have a very special guest on today because we did this collaboration but didn't didn't really collaborate directly. So please introduce yourself. Hi, um, as you know, if you don't know me, I'm Talia from Talia's Crochet Creations, and I'm a crochet designer. Um, I've been crocheting from 2014 and recently started designing in 2017. And I was able to um, get this opportunity to collaborate with Knit Crate. And it just so happened to be was Christy Glass Crate. So here we are having this conversation about Crate. Yeah, so cool. So they asked me almost a year ago to be one of the influencers for a crate. And we had a lot of back and forth about what the colors were gonna be and the fiber and designers and things and it, it ended up being that you were the crochet designer for the crate and I had I had not uh, met you before so I reached out and said let's just have a chat so that we can get to know each other and then the whole world can too so tell us your fiber story it's, you said you started in 2014 yes I did I started crocheting 2014 uh, while I was a junior in college and I just needed something to take my mind off of school and work and, you know, so I went to my local Walmart and my mom taught me my first stitch <laughs> and I just took off from there. I studied YouTube. Basically, I went to YouTube University and that's how I started. You know, I, I didn't start pattern designing until, you know, 2017. But in between then, I was doing like making scarves, hats for family and friends. And now, had your mother been crocheting as a lifestyle with you growing up and things? Were you aware of her ability? I never saw her crochet. I just know that I had a blanket and my little brother had a blanket and I grew up seeing that blanket and it turned out she was the one who made it. So, you know, when she, when I asked her to teach me, she really remembered. Um, and we, it turned out that she crocheted different from me, holding the hook and whatever. So I had to go learn, you know, elsewhere, you know, different techniques and whatnot. So she really doesn't crochet. I think that was her first and only project. Isn't that interesting? I love that she was willing to teach you though, even though she didn't consider herself an expert. No, but she, Recently, I found out that my great grandmother was a crocheter in Jamaica, but my mom doesn't know her. She passed away before my mom was born. So I don't know, I guess it passed down somehow. <laughs> it's so cool when we find that out. I recently found that out too, because I received these pieces from my grandma's basement after she passed away. And I realized I have a bonnet that my great grandmother wore Wow. It is crocheted and it's in pristine condition. And so you have to assume that her own mother made it or maybe even her grandmother. Right. So five or six generations back made this piece that I have. That's so cool. So cool. It's so cool to think about. And I, and just hearing you talk about your great grandma in Jamaica, I'm just trying to imagine what sort of things she would make. I'm assuming it's a lot of housewares or cotton, things like that. It was. I heard it's uh, a lot of doilies and things for the dresser and, you know, pillowcases and stuff like that. But I don't own anything. It, nothing was passed down. So I have no clue. Just recently, I received a package from my mom full of doilies. And most of them are crocheted. One is a knit start. It has knitting in the middle and then it switches to crochet. Oh, that's cool. So cool. And then one has like I know there's a term for it, but it's almost like 3D crochet. I, don't, I can't remember the term, someone will know, but it's just, I, I wish I knew exactly whose hands made those, but I just have to, like you, say to myself, it was passed down somehow. Right, right. So cool. So, so you really took hold, your, go ahead. Hold on to them. Definitely. So you really, you really, caught on to crochet. And so when did you decide I'm going to design? Um, people kept asking for patterns and I had no clue how to write one. So I had to go learn. And um, 
my family was pushing me because I'm like, you know, it's just a pattern, you know, but then I was getting, you know, friends were saying, we want this, you should write the pattern. And I went and looked into it and it wasn't anything that I planned on doing. It just happened. And, you know, I really had no plans for crochet at all. Now, is this your side hustle? Is it your main gig designing crochet? Uh, for right now, it's, it's the side. I want it to be main, you know, I'm home now for most part. So I'm trying to transition into it being the main right now. Are we all at home right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all just at home trying to get through this. Yeah. Now, what was the first design you did? Do you remember what it was? Oh gosh. <laughs> you mean design as in pattern wise or? Yeah. Um. What was it? I think the first pattern I made was a hat pattern. I don't know, I would have to go look. It wasn't bad, but um, the pattern was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. Well, we learn so much by doing, right? Yeah, so, you know, it's not out. I, I have pictures of it way down my timeline, but there's no pattern for it. I think, I don't know if I'll revisit, but who knows? Now, you did design for Knit Crate for this, for my crate. Did you do design work before this? For Knit Crate or? For other companies. Oh yeah. Um, so how did you get into that? They contacted me. So the first, um, this year I worked with uh, Crochet Now Magazine and Sheepies was, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, and I'm doing, and, we crochet. I thought that magazines and websites usually put out a call of some sort and then people respond. So did you have to give a proposal to them? Um, so for Crochet Now, they, um, they reached out to me and I did do a proposal, but I wasn't selected for that round. Uh, I'm just trying to get a feel for the process because I, I know a lot of people who watch my channel are just starting out and they want to get into it. So to help us understand. Mm -hmm. They do, they do some, um, do send out their calls. Uh, I think you have to subscribe or some sort, um, but they contacted me directly. I get, they had a missing item that they want. They wanted a piece, a garment piece, and they asked if I can um, design for it. And that's how I ended up in the magazine. For We Crochet, I had, you know, had talks with um, some of the ladies that worked there and they sent out the call and I submitted for that one. I submitted for that one. And then the last company, Sheepies, um, they asked me to make something for their um, for their work with their yarns. And so how does it work with Knit Crate? So Knit Crate, they reached out to me as well. Um, it was it was last minute kind of. Um, I believe it was September uh, sometime. They asked if I was able to, you know, do a quick project for this crate because they needed a crochet designer. So most most basically most of the companies they came to me and uh, I only submitted twice to um, yarn companies that's a great place to be in yeah it just happened you know took me by surprise but yeah now I haven't even seen the design so can you reveal what it is for the crate I can't it's yeah. well for you no for you? no let's not put it on the camera let's let's have it be a surprise I don't have it. I mailed it in. <gasps> can you say what it is or not? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I can goodness. say it. I can. I can say it now. But if 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 it's that, you can edit it out. <laughs> no, no, no. You can tell me once we stop recording. So okay. I'm gonna show the the yarn. I have a few here actually. I'm missing one. Um. Now, did you do the sock yarn or the regular yarn? I did the the twinkle the. Audine Twinkle, yeah. So sparkly. Yes, I love it. I have the, was it the roller skate? Yes, I think this is roller skate. Yeah, that's the one I did on um, my project then. So pretty. And I can't find the periwinkle one. Where did it go? Here it is. Oh, that sounds so pretty. Oh, that was my favorite color. That is so pretty. Gorgeous. That is so beautiful. 
So they send you the yarn and then you write the pattern and make the sample. Yes, I made the sample and wrote the pattern. Yep. And then they and then you send it back and they photograph it. They're going to. Yep. I don't know if they photographed it yet, but yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. I just I love I love thinking of all of the different wheels that are turning to make it happen. Yeah. So are you working on some more crates for them? Well, as of now, no. Okay. Maybe, hopefully in the future, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do any knitting? I I know how to purl and and that's about and what's the other one? I guess knit. The knit. <laughs> I can make a basic hat, but I don't know how to read a pattern. So that's kind of that's okay. kind of stagnant there. No, that's okay, because I was the same way. I could only knit and purl for years. And every time I tried crochet, I was like, I don't understand what's happening. That's how that's how it is for me. Yes. And then I finally just was determined, I'm going to learn to crochet. And I love it so much. It's fun. Do you crochet every day? I try to, but if I don't, probably probably like three to five times a week. It depends. If I if I if I do a big project, I kind of give my hands and shoulders a rest. So yeah. you know. So do you have some patterns that you have self-published that you can tell us about? Oh yeah, I have um okay, let me let me um so I'm working I actually I had actually have it in my lap right now. It's in black. It's my for the love of bobbles wrap. Um that's my re most recent um pattern accessories. You know, it's fun. It's a fun stitch. And I'm doing um my cable beanie soon. It's in testing right now. Um it's a it's an old pattern, but I'm re, you know, redoing it now. Um, actually, no, not an old pattern. I pub, I sold a hat, but I'm just making a pattern. Um, and I have my cable shawl that I did last year. You know, some fall fun fun fall accessories, and I do have some garments. Um, I'm redoing my Genesis um, sweater. It's a simple top down rib, kind of look like knit. When I started crocheting, I wanted something to look like knit. So that was kind of my my um, crochet project for that. Well, you and cables a couple of times. Is that is that like a big challenge trying to get cables in crochet? Uh, it took, it's it's not as hard as it seemed. When you look at it, it, it may seem hard, but you, it takes a lot of practice. Like I've had people that do some of my cable patterns and they did it for the first time and they thought it wasn't, you know, after they did it, they're like, oh, you know, I wish I had started earlier or it's not that hard at all. So it's just, it's really simple. You just have to know where to place your hook and, you know, a lot of skip stitches and working in skip stitches. Um, so it's not hard. I would think cable, uh, knitting cables are harder than <laughs> crochet cables. That's so funny. Yeah, I don't know. I remember I was very intimidated by cables with knitting. And then I was like, oh, this is actually kind of easy. But I can't imagine a crochet cable yet. Like, I would really need to read that pattern. I can't imagine how to just budget. it. If you know how to do post stitches, then you're fine. Yes, I can do front post and back post. That's all there. That's all it is. Hey, OK. That's all it is. <laughs> all right, that's good to know. Now, what's the level for the knit crate? Is it intermediate, beginner? It's for the price, it's beginner. Okay. Yeah, it's really simple. Yeah. It's good. a beginner pattern, yeah. Hey, okay. that's good to know because then if people get it, like I love that knit crate has a knit and a crochet pattern. So, you know, if you do both, you can pick. And then if you don't, maybe you challenge yourself to learn how to do it. Do, right, right. <laughs> Coming out of my <laughs> It's joining the <laughs> happening. What what is happening? That just shows my bad weaving. You know what? When you weave in the ends, you should put the seam in the back. That's what you should do. There we go. I'm, you know, I only weave when I'm you know doing like uh, <laughs> my own projects. No. <laughs> She's like, it's done. No, it's do done. It. And if you can see them hanging out, you just like snip it. Just tuck it. Yep. <laughs> Snip and tuck. It's the way we hide it. Yes. 
really funny. Now, what were you studying in college? Uh, I studied small business management. Ooh. Yeah, and then I was in HR and um, HR in a construction company. I did a little bit of that, mostly that and payroll. So I, I feel like I didn't really use, use my degree at work until I started doing crochet work because like I had to do everything for myself. So the marketing, the, you know, the admin work, I really didn't see my degree until I started doing crochet work. I was just going to say that because now you have your own small business. Yeah. It's good to be I mean, your own boss, right? Kind of. I mean, it's the timing wise, you know, you can set your own hours, but um, you have to make time for, you have to remember to make time for yourself. I felt the same the way. hardest part. Yes. This morning, I remember I got up and I felt like my to-do list was so long. And I kept, the, my mantra this morning was take care of yourself first. You have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. first. And so I forced myself to go on my walk because sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you're like, I don't have enough hours to finish all the things I need to do. No. But you're going to crash and burn if you don't take care of yourself, right? Yeah. So I went on my walk. And you and now I feel like I can tackle the day. Yeah. Well, at least you got the exercise in. Right? Now That's talk good. about your crochet community. Like, who are you connected with? Is it mostly online? Is it mostly not online? What, what, what's your world like? If I were to get like on your phone and look at your Instagram, like who do you follow? What are you into? Stuff like that. It's mostly online. Like I know, I know I'm originally from New York. And when I was up there, you know, I would have, you know, go to a couple meetups, but now I'm in Virginia. It's, you know, I'm new here. So it's mostly online. I still have most of my friends in New York. Um, so who do I follow? I follow a lot of people. Um, some of my close, close, close people that I talk to like every day. Um, I don't know if you know Whitney, Whitney from Whitney Marie Anderson. What's her handle? Whitney Marie Anderson, she does, um, she does uh, basically everything. She recently just won the crafters. I think it was the crafters blog award from Lovecraft. She's so cute. Yes. And she makes the most adorable stitch markers. They're so cute. Look, look at the, they're little, um, they're kind of Frida inspired, but they have little pom-pom buns and little flowers. And the flower crowns. Yep. And oh. I think, I don't know if she have any puff, Puff, um, puff hairstyles in that one, but they're really cute. And it looks like she makes these little dolls too. Yes. Did you see her um, Michelle Obama no. um, doll? Yeah, that funny. one was really good. Oh, she's so cute. So did you just met her online? We actually have been following each other. I follow her. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, yeah she's awesome. <laughs> well, it's funny because what happens is your algorithm changes. Yes. So it's like if you're if you don't constantly go on someone's page, it's like you lose them. Yeah. So it's good to be reminded that I follow her. Oh, here's Michelle Obama. Look with the pearls and the black dress. Yes. That's so yep. cute. Okay. Well, what we'll put down as someone to follow? That's so cute. Who? Anybody else you want to mention? And um, Elizabeth. I know Elizabeth. We live about. I know we live close by each other, but we haven't met yet in person. Um, her her handle is um, Desamore Designs. D e s a m o u r Designs. Yes. Yeah, she's ho she's hosting um make alongs for she hosts make alongs um for by POC makers uh -huh. that we're currently doing right now. So she's, I found her through there like last year. I think it was last year we found each other. Look at this cute little tank top she has on. Yeah, really cute. So talk about the BIPOC makers. Have you been uh, discovering a lot of new people lately? I, yes, I have. And um, I don't know if it's because you know, everyone's home now, you know, a lot of people, you know, is on social media now. So it's more, a lot more interactions. Mm -hmm. um, I ha we had a good turnout this, this time. 
Um, I, the hashtags, I love going through the hashtags. And so basically you have to find a designer under that has under 10K followers and, you know, create their design and you can win prizes at the end of the week. And which is really pretty. They have pretty gorgeous yarns, patterns, you know, she has a lot going on there. So who, who is that? That's Decimore Designs who's doing that? Yes, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, oh, it's, so she's hosting the BIPOC make along and it ends December 18th and we're talking in November. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Initiative. I, have you seen the BIPOC and fiber website? I have, I have. Good, right? I've, I've, yes, it is. I've, I've followed, I found a lot of um, dyers, yarn dyers through there and mm -hmm. designers through there that I didn't know existed. So it was, it's really nice to go and check on there. Yeah, I think it's a great source. If you feel like you want to change your feed, I guess that's yeah. the way to put it, you just yeah. go there and then it's really clear. I feel like you can click on things easily and go straight to websites. And mm -hmm. I found two dyers there, Queen's Yarn and Mimo uh, recently. And I really enjoyed getting to know them. I did a little Zoom call with them and I never would have known because it just wasn't showing up in my feed, you know? Yeah. I don't know, the algorithm kind of sucks yeah. a lot. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. So if you want to be proactive, it's a good website. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to look at your feed. Okay. <laughs> I've been neglecting it for some time, but. You got to walk know, that feed. Busy, busy behind, you know, busy behind the scenes. Look at you. So do you love <laughs> the color yellow or is that just the mood you're in recently? um it's I guess it's the mood you kind of go you you're posting in color stories oh. you think so yeah this top is so cute okay what's this called that's the Myra ruffle crop top that is so cute thank you so I did that over this I did that this spring and I don't know it kind of was like an accident but yeah I just sat down and I wanted to use the stitch and I said, okay, let's see what we can do here. It's and okay. that's what happened. Look at this bobbles and cables. Obsessed. Oh yeah. That was my first, um, actually I worked with Lovecraft too. That was, um, I worked with them on that project. This is so chic. Look, it's a, it's a total, what do you call this? A duster? Uh, I, I, it's two sizes. So I just had cardigan. Cause you could do the cropped length or the long length. So yeah, that's yeah. so cute. <gasps> Thank you. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What's this one? Is this a sneak peek? What's this one? Actually I did that with, um, oh my gosh, there's so much collaborations. Uh, I'm, <laughs> that's come, that's with the hook nook. I did that. I did that with the hook nook. So the, um, I think, I, I don't know if I posted the full picture, but it's on her website. I'm looking right now. That was from January of last year, I believe. Okay, I can't believe this is crocheting. That's the cable shawl I was telling you about. The cables. Yep. Oh my gosh. Well, you're busy. Yeah, I try to stay busy. Okay, I'm obsessed with the styling of this photo. Look at that. That is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> I love that thank you that was supposed to be the uh, back to school nerdy look <laughs> kind of uh, that's what I'm going for me back to school a little sexy a little sexy look <laughs> I guess you could put it that way <laughs> now wait what's happening with your hair here it looks like it's twisted up to the side or what's happening with the side there Oh, it's a mohawk. It's just pinned to the side. It's in curls and I just pinned the side into a, you know, into a mohawk. Like a faux hawk. Yeah, a faux hawk, yeah. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't shave it. No, I just brushed it up with the pin and tucked the pin in there and it stays. Okay, I said faux hawk and you said fro hawk. So oh. that, that is next level because now we have a fro hawk. It's basically a fro in a, you know. <laughs> Wait, look, here's a back view of the frohawk, which did we just make up that term? I think you did. No, it's it, that term been around. Is it? I don't, yeah. I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, wait, what about this one? 
Look at this one. Oh, the Adaya tea. Yeah, that was last summer. And I love the hair in that one too. Thank you. Your hair is changing every other post you have new hair, which I'm obsessed with. I know, my sister is a, a, a hairstylist. So for most of the styles you see on my feed, she does my hair. Oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Yeah, I, I, I know, I, I, I tell her I love her every day. <laughs> yeah, because you have like a, a stylist in-house. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to your link tree just so we, we make sure we know all the things. Okay, so Talia has a blog, a website, Ravelry. You are also other things. Look at all these affiliates. You have Lion Brand, Lovecraft, Sweet Crochet, Creative Bug, and do you have a YouTube channel? I do, but it's 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 it Don't needs work. Into it. <laughs> it needs work. <laughs> but it's um, huh? But it's there just in case. Just in case, yeah. I do quick links on there. I love that. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Any show and tell? Any more show and tell you have? Oh, they're secrets. So many secrets. I, they're secrets. I wish I could. That's fun, though. Huh? That's fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But I'm itching because they come out. I'm looking at them right now. They come out next year. And I can't wait to share everyone. It sounds like everyone needs to follow you so they don't miss out. Well, I hope they do. I hope they enjoy themselves when they come and follow. <laughs> so what is your favorite? If you could only crochet with one size hook for the rest of your life. A six millimeter hook. And what letter is that? Oh, um, hold so, on. I think that's an H. It's a uh, J. Oh, a J. Let me make sure. A Hold J's on. getting up there. J's getting like on the bulky side. Yeah, and even even when I use, you know, finer yarns, you know, I think this year was the first time I designed a whole project with a four millimeter hook. Because <laughs> I try not to go below a five, you know, but, you know, this, you know, make things happen. But my favorite is the six millimeter now i think go ahead have you tried the crochet thread with the tiny tiny wait you didn't see her face because she's not making a sound so it didn't flip to her but this is the face she made she just went <laughs> she was like no <laughs> i can say i just did a winter project in finger and weight yarn and oh my goodness. It's so intense. It's intense. And that's what I always wonder, like with knitters, most of the time it's finger and weight, like the, I don't know if, does it, is it as bad? It's intense for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I think a lot of, I mean, what I noticed is when I first started getting really into knitting, people were making all of these fingering weight sweaters because that's what designers were offering. And then I feel like the knitters are going, you know what, <laughs> you want DK. Because <laughs> I've noticed a lot of DK weight is coming out now. Yeah. Dyers are making DK because we're all as collectively like, please no more size four needles. Right. So I feel you. Right. Okay. So I love DK weight, by the way. Yes. At first I, I wouldn't go past worsted, but now, that's my favorite weight. Yeah, it's nice because it's it's fingering weight disguised as worsted. Right. That's what DK is. Yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that's actually perfect. <laughs> totally that because I got this awesome fingering weight yarn and I'm going. I want to make a hat, not a fingering weight hat. No. So I just doubled it. Yeah. And it felt like the same thing, only went way faster. Yeah. Yep. So. There we go. Well, thank you so much for your time and very welcome for a little collab. If you want to get the December knit crate kit, you will have Talia's pattern in there, which is exciting. Um, and I guess we'll say goodbye. Okay. It was nice talking to you. You too. And if you want to purchase the December knit crate, there is a link right underneath this video that you can click on through and check all that out at knitcrate.com. Thank you.